Hello, I'm Ian Harford and this is Team Wild TV. I'm going hunting tomorrow. It's the first time I've been out hunting since Christmas, so I'm pretty much ready to get out there. And I just wanted to go through with you the equipment that I'm going to be using and why. We're going to start off with my rifle, accessories, and then we're going to move on to my clothing, give you an idea of what we're going to be taking for fallow and munchak stalking at this time of year. So, let's start with the rifle and the equipment. As you can see, I like to travel light. Although I do have my uh, Markor Monteria 28 litre backpack, um, which I get all of my equipment in, plus I normally take a flask, my sandwiches, and then a spare um, set of clothing, uh, either a spare jacket or, or some underlayers. But broadly, for a day's deer stalking, you don't really need to take too much. I've seen quite a few guys go out there and they, they look like they're going on a, on a mountain safari, they're going hunting mountain goat or, or whatever. But when you're going for a day stalking somewhere from a professional outfit uh, like Service UK, you really just need the basics. Um, but by basics, I don't mean basic, I mean you need the equipment which is appropriate for the job. Now, as usual, I'm taking my Sour 202 Outback uh, in 7x64 with its Smart Real Tree stock and of course the uh, Zeiss Victory Davari 4x16x50 scope. Now, this is my favourite scope, I absolutely love this. And, and it's been doing a lot of hunting with me all over the globe, so something less exotic species maybe this this time round, but but still it's a solid performer, and I'm used to the uh, I'm used to this setup. We'll be using Norma Am Oryx ammunition, uh, 156 grain, which uh, I've been down to the range today, and it's been uh, although it's pretty windy at the moment, I managed a sub one inch group um, in gale force winds at 100 yards, so that should be more than enough. We'll have to wait and see what the conditions tomorrow bring. But that shouldn't open up too much. I think the, the problem is mainly going to be trying to keep myself still, particularly if I'm in a high seat. Anyway, so that's the rifle sorted. Um, I probably won't take the bipod um, because we will be shooting uh, from a high seat or from sticks. I really only take the bipod. Um, if we're going to be up on the hill somewhere, somewhere we can get a good flat platform. Uh, when you're in and around woodlands, as we'll be in the Chilterns, the chances are we're going to be shooting either from the high seat or if we walk and stalk from a set of sticks. Now on the end of this, I do have my Azor Utra um, North Star Moderator, Reflex Moderator. Um, it doesn't affect the, the, the handling too much, it's, it's quite lightweight, it doesn't extend the barrel as far forward as something like a T8 would do, uh, and it's nice and compact. I personally find it's, it's, it's okay to work with, particularly once you've taken the, uh, the bipod off. So in addition to the rifle, what other equipment will we be taking? Well obviously we've got 20 rounds of ammunition, um, my trusty Buck 110 Folding Hunter, uh, there are, I suppose, more expensive knives on the market. These these go for about 50 quid, I think. And this thing has been, as I say, all over the world with me. It's carved up everything from warthogs and wildebeest um, through to red deer cull animals. So it's, uh, it's something that I don't necessarily want to lose, but it wouldn't break my heart if I did. Not like some of the other hunting knives I have in my collection. Um, these are probably the most important bit of equipment that I'll be taking with me. My uh, Zeiss Victory. 10x45 range finding binoculars. Now I'm very fortunate I do have quite a lot of glass um, but even though I can go to the shelf and pick out just about any set of binoculars that's, that, that's on the market at the moment these are the ones I keep gravitating to. Uh, for 10x45 they are reasonably heavy but I don't mind that too much I'm a big lad. I've got my uh, Browning bino, bino harness on here anyway. I've fashioned a, a little tie there to keep the uh, the eyepiece is clear, clear of water and, and debris. And as you can see, these are a little bit dirty. These have literally been all over the world and hunted just about every species, species imaginable. Now, I don't know how they managed to do that, but they've managed to find the perfect binoculars, a perfect set of binoculars for all hunting environments, be it air gunning, uh, be it long range uh, shooting. I've been scanning the, the mountains in British Columbia from 1800 yards away. The clarity of picture through these is outstanding. And, all, and of course, shooting from a high seat in low light conditions at, 30, 40, 50 yards, they still have the same performance level you'd expect from Zeiss Bino. So more on those a little bit later on, but I can highly recommend those. Head torch. Now, obviously we're going to be not using the head torch on the way in in the morning, but if we do have to do an evening stalk, um, you'd be surprised just how dark it is when there's no um, when there's no lights around, and certainly if it's overcast, so always make sure you take a head torch with you. Um, Little blade tech knife sharpener. I prefer not to use these on my knives because they can be a little bit aggressive. Um, but if you do manage to get a couple of deer, then you need to make sure you've got something just to keep the edge on the knife when you're skinning. And then, of course, don't forget your camera. 
Now this is a uh, Sony DSC TX10. Um, of course, I've got some pretty smart cameras that I use for all of my photography work here in the studio. Uh, but this little puppy, it's waterproof down to five meters. Uh, it is 16.2 megapixels, and I have dropped this in snow, in rivers, off mountains, and all manner of other places, and it still managed to survive. So they're about 400 quid. But if you're out there and you, you can just slip it into the side of your pocket and you can take good pictures as you're walking along. Um, if you want something slightly better quality, then obviously you need to keep that in your, mat, your, your rucksack. But I do find this is good for snapping shots here and there. So that's the shooting equipment. As you can see, we don't need to take too much. We're only going for a day. Um, provided you've zeroed your rifle the day before, of course, if we're going for a morning stalk, the last thing you want to be doing is, is sending rounds down, down the range. Um, make sure that your gun has been zeroed. And also that the stalker that you're with is happy that you're competent and that you can group with the rifle. It's very important. Um, You'll be encouraged to see you bringing along good quality equipment, particularly without taking the, the kitchen sink with it. We don't want to be lugging around a rucksack full of stuff. So, now we're going to go and have a look at the clothing we're going to be wearing tomorrow. So, this is my friend George. Um, it's much easier to show you the equipment I'm going to be using while George is wearing it than rather when I'm wearing it. So, as you can see, he's, uh, he's dressed all head to toe in, uh, in Realtree AP. Uh, for this time of the year, it is a perfect camouflage pattern. There are no leaves on the trees. Um, it is, it, it's quite, because of the light, the light's quite dull, um, particularly if it's overcast and stormy as it has been today. And there's a perfect balance of shading and colorations in Realtree AP, and it's perfect for the hunting environments here in the UK during the fall and winter. Now, George today is wearing what I'll be wearing tomorrow, and that is a Deer Hunter's Rusky set. Now, I'm, a, as you know, a Rivers West man. Um, I do like my Rivers West gear because I know it's completely waterproof and the stuff does perform. I've used it you know, on my travels and I've, I've yet to find a piece of Rivers West clothing that's let me down. However, Rivers West aren't the only real tree uh, product that's available here in the UK, um, so I thought I'd give Deer Hunter a go. Now I have used Deer Hunter equipment back in the, uh, should we say, the early days of my hunting career, and the Ram Jacket, I've had two of those, and uh, I actually gave them away before they wore out, so I know that they're, they're good quality products. So it's my first time um, with the Rusky Jacket. Now, it doesn't just come as a single jacket, it's actually got a zip-in liner, um, which is here. Now this thing is very heavy, very padded. The Rusky kit, I can tell you now, is designed for cold weather. Now I've actually zipped this out because I know that I'm not going to need to be that warm. There is additional um, insulation in this jacket here, plus underneath the jacket I also have a fleece gilet and then a long sleeve Realtree AP t-shirt. Now, if we're going to get, get up and we're going to walk and stalk, and the chances are if it's not raining, I might be able to take my jacket off, but if there's still quite a high wind, then we will leave that on. It's unlikely because it, it may be stormy outside, but it is still quite warm, so I'm not going to need that insulating layer. Underneath this, of course, I'll still wear my thermal underwear, uh, my um, Rivers West Apex base layers, or depending if it's even colder, I'll use my Thermosweat um, polypropylene base, base layers, much in the same way as I did when I was in British Columbia. So, he has the uh, Rusky coat, fleece gilet, t-shirt, and then obviously my underwear. Same, same with the trousers, the Rusky trousers, which are also padded and insulated. And finishing off at the bottom, uh, TF gear um, trail boots, XP trail boots, also in Realtree AP. He has got a set of uh, these snazzy Rusky gloves on as well. These also match the outfit. Person, they, they, do, they do have the gaps on the fingers to put your finger, pick it, trigger finger through, but I do tend to take my glove off before I take the shot. So I'll also be wearing, because you can see my hands are shockingly white, um, I'll also be wearing a pair of liner gloves underneath. That way I can take the main glove off and I've still got plenty of feel on the trigger for when I go, uh, when I go and take the shot. Uh, and of course, finishing off the, the ensemble is a Team Realtree hat. So, change of weather conditions tomorrow. Hopefully it's going to stay, uh, stay warm and dry. It is going to be windy. So that can actually work for us or work against us, depending on the way the wind's blowing and the severity of the wind. If it's really, really severe, then the deer may not, may not come out and see us at all. But for sure, um, it's, going to be diff it's going to be difficult for them to sense where we are. We are going to be in high seats and elevated positions, so that's going to help. So I'm going to be sat still for a long period of time, hopefully nice and comfortable, warm, and dry in my, uh, in my rusky outfit. And if we don't manage to see something in the morning from the high seat, then hopefully we're going to start and, and do a walk and start later on in the afternoon. 
So that's what I'm taking with me tomorrow. Um, we'll hopefully come back and get, I'll have some success to tell you about tomorrow afternoon. If there's any questions on this or any other equipment, then please feel free to get a hold of me through uh, ian at ianharford.com or send an inquiry through my website through www.ianharford.com.